Hi friends of golfers, Eric Silbert, EJS Golf, EJSGolf.com. So if you had to guess, what would be the number one response I get to my question when I ask students, what do they want to get out of this lesson? Or if they're telling me what they want to get in my form they fill out before a lesson. This is from the highest handicap to the plus handicaps. I, I've tried to think back if no one has said this yet to me as the reason for coming to see me. Um, I am sure there has been somebody who hasn't, and I've, I don't know who they are, but I think there was somebody who did say uh, something else, but it was crazy what they said. So um, <laughs> I think that's why I kind of forgot it. So um, everybody to a T comes to me, says they want consistency. So the highest of handicap, the person who misses the ball, uh, tops it nonstop. Clear up, moth, geez. Um, they want consistency. The plus two wants consistency. So the plus six wants consistency. So what is the difference between all of them? Those handicaps, they're massive if you think about it, consistency wise. What is, let's just say plus six is our best right here. What do they want for consistency? So let's say they they hit a, a cut shot and their miss is a draw. Okay, so they hate that miss. You know, so it'll it'll turn left when they want to go right. That may happen one one time, and it's you know it's not usually a huge double cross that hurts kills them. Okay, um, or it could be going from hey my ball's moving eight yards in the air. You know, over two hundred yards, it's moving eight feet. I'd like to get that down to three or four. I don't like that much curvature. There's the number, that's the plus six one on this chart. Now you go up to here to the worst handicap and they want to get consistent. So everybody wants consistency, but it's such a different grand scale of what they're on. So need to decide which one you're on. And, and, and really when you come to me, I would start, start to think about it deeper of what consistency means to you. Because when I get into that question with people, there's really not an answer. Because I'll ask them, well, what, what does that mean to you? Because I'm, I'm never trying to catch anybody up. Believe me, I'm not ever. I'm trying to understand what that consistency means to them. Because I need to know, is consistency to you just hitting the ball? So not missing it? Is consistency to you... Um, you know, not moving the ball so much in there, hitting it dead straight is what you consider consistency. I, I don't know, you know? So now when I ask the really good handicaps about that, they'll give me an answer, okay? It'll come down to an answer of what they really want to fix because they know it. But it, it's very quick, even when I get into the uh, handicaps that are not plus, you could have a, a one, a scratch handicap who really doesn't know. And there's a lot of things I think about when I hear that. So that tells me that most likely, my first question to them is when I find that out, that I'm not getting an answer, okay? It's just like around the table. I don't know, I just hit these shots that I don't like. I'm like, well, what, what are they? Well, I'm not sure, so I'm, and they're not sure. So what it brings me to is this. They're not tracking their game is what happens, okay? So they're not, that really good player is not out there using software or whatever they're using. I love Arcos, I think it's the best. Um, there's also other good stuff out there. I just love Arcos and the features they have it, plus all the data they've accrued with more shots, I think, than anybody. Well, it is more than anybody by a ton. And um, so you can set on there a lot of things to help yourself. You can say it'll tell you what you are versus other handicaps. And let's say you want to set it and you, let's say you're a five handicap, but yet you're, it tells you your putting is a 10. So you're like, oh, wow, I'm, I, Put like a 10, it tells you what you need to work on. So that's typically there. So now I think you run into a whole other story when somebody who is a, you know, a 35 handicap, 20 they want consistency, you know, I can figure out what that means. They, they want to hit the golf ball. Okay. They, they're sick of topping it. They're sick of hitting way, way behind it. Okay. Um, so it varies for each. So I'd say starting up the scale from the worst is contact with the ball and you go all the way down here to the very end where we get to the movement of the ball. We're talking launch angles. How high do we want to hit it? We're talking spin. 
it gets so much more in depth that doesn't mean the player has to get in depth, it means I do it as a coach because I need to figure out how to get this golfer what they need, okay? So my advice to you as a student, if you're one, if you're a coach, then maybe you ask these questions if you don't already, but if you're a student, think about it before you come to see me or anybody else, like what is consistency? What do you really want? And if you just track a little bit of what you do when you're playing, you're gonna find out what you do really bad. Because here's the thing, it, you know, maybe there's something you do a little better. And, and I wanna give another piece of advice here. Um, there is not many people, the better players will come to me and wanna work on chipping and putting. Okay, now you take somebody who's, I'm just gonna say an average, eight handicap up. They don't wanna work on putting and chipping. They just wanna hit the ball better, okay? When, and they'll t I'll ask how their putting is and chipping, they'll tell me, they're good, they're good, you're good. And then they tell me their stats, if I can get them to tell them, and they're not. You know, it's just, the thing is, it's not bad. You, when you putt, you don't ever miss a putt. You don't top it, okay? Um, now, these people, like, chipping now, I've had people come to me crying and ready to quit the game. Because if you're a better player and you bomb your drive and, let's say, hit your second and you're right in front of the green, you know, love to get, chip it up and get down, get a nice birdie, and you walk out of there with a seven because you played them and your chipping is awful. So that's I think a good player will come to me and do that. What I wish would happen is, and I try to move golfers this way, is the worst player would love to start there. And, and I push them that way too. So, because here's the thing, if we start working on smaller shots, okay, just learning to get contact. And one of my favorite drills um, for contact, and, and, and I tell you, it's, any of you watch my series, you'll know what I've talked about in my post too with this, um, my blog post is contact being one of the four fundamentals, okay? So just this little drill here, I want you to get just set up. If you're not making clean contact, I want you to lean a little bit forward, okay? Now, when I say lean forward, watch when I hit it, I don't go like this, okay? So it's more of, see my head where it stays? See how I shift more into this left side here? And then I stay there. My head stays kind of where it is. I don't, I'm not like this. But I just kind of, instead of being here, I shift here. So I'm about 70% on the left, okay? And you can get thinner or, um, you know, less wide if you want here. I'm just gonna shift. Now, from there, I just want you to get it up to, I'm still saying here about 70%. I want you to get the club back here, which is about, if that's six, this is nine, about 7.30. Now let's match our back a bit from here. And we just want to go like this and learn to turn out of the way. Okay. Now, if I look at my track man here, my path was a little too inside out. I don't like that six face matched it. It was a nice, nice little push. Um, but the point is when you look at it, um, you know, like, uh, I hit, um, what four after for my low point. So what I didn't do there that I would like to do, and I'd be okay for most people, is I would love to have gone more from here to here, so I'm more like that. And I did not rotate enough like that. So tip, tipping this over more. So I did more of the kind of the big hook swing that I had probably when I was younger was more, and when you're here, you go more up. And this is good for you as a slice, you'd wanna go like that. But I wanna think more of my swing is high to low instead of low to high, which is if you're trying to draw it, okay? So, but we're still gonna start from that same position. We're on our left side. I just have to feel more of this. <laughs> and I, there you go, folks, you just saw it. Topped it, give me a break. If any of you know, this is my first day back after having hand surgery, pretty heavy on my hand, so you can see the evidence. <laughs> but I'm gonna leave that on there, because I, you know, I don't, I don't I want this being, I don't ever take off a bad shot, okay? I don't, and re-videotape it, okay? So we're here. Is it embarrassing? Yeah, but just shows you. I've had surgery, I, I still make mistakes too, even being a professional. Okay, so a little better. I didn't get down great on it. I'm not expecting you. I'm kind of scared to go into the ground right now with my hand, okay? So I still have another month that I can go hard at it, so I'm not, I'm not surprised I'm a little high right now with it. So anyways, that is a great drill for really feel what it's like getting our front hand, getting down on the ball, okay? And learning what compression is like. Another one I like 
these are all basically good, you know, learning compression drills. Is again our feet together. I call it heels and our toes apart. This is great because it's a lot easier for folks when we are on one axis instead of two, okay? One axis meaning up and down here, we're just rotating around verse two. One, look, I'm just turning around this one. When I go to two, there's an axis here, an axis here that I kind of go around that one, and then back up around that one. So when we're only going out around one, we get to do some pretty neat things. And if you are a rotary swinger, you're gonna find out you can hit the ball about 90% the same as this. Now, I kind of like to start a lot like this, especially when I'm coming back to feel. I like to feel my right oblique turning, give me a nice big turn. Okay, so there we go. And so what I want you guys feeling on this shot here is that we feel kind of compact. We don't even have to have a long swing, okay? That's not what we need. Heels get our toes apart. We're gonna go here to here, there, okay? So, here's a couple ideas for you for those of you that are having consistency issues. Now, for the better player, let's talk about that, who is curving the ball, let's say they don't like too much. What does that mean for them, okay? If you're curving too much, there is a, there is a gap that is too big between the face angle and your path. So, let's say your club path is I'm gonna say, this orange line here would be your target line. Let's say your path is here, okay? So you have a path coming in pretty far from the inside out like this, and let's say you are hooking it. Well, that means your club face is coming in close to that. You see that's closed right here to this path. So I'm coming down this path with a closed club face right there. So that ball's gonna start off on my face and hook to pretty good, depending on how much this is there, uh, how much this is closed compared to here. Now. The other person may be moving it too much. They're going to be coming on a path more like this over, right? And then it just depends how much their face is open to this, but how much it will curve. So what we're going to do with that golfer is try to just get them closer to zero, okay? Meaning a zero path and a zero face. Now, do we want? Do we need that exactly? No, no, we don't at all. But it's something to work towards. If you're if they're hitting a plus five, meaning too far inside to out, well, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have them go like I'll put this probably right here. Because if they're doing that, they would be like this and probably catching that stick. So I would want them to come here and feel like they're see this that's gonna feel a lot different for somebody who's a plus or coming really inside out. It's gonna feel more of that high to low. Okay? Now this is good for actually either having this right on the outside of your ball because it's going to force you not to do either. You're going to catch it this way or you're going to catch it that way. So great drill. So um, I don't want to make this too long because I think I got my point across between the issues from up here, high handicap to here for consistency. Um, I will say this, that will help you a lot too. There are certain facts that we do in golf that are 100% um, true on how good you are, okay? One of them is this, that is huge. It's your shoulder tilt, okay? So when I go back, my shoulder tilt here, pros, maybe around 35, 40, 42 some, you have amateurs all the way up here. So now this is another one again, another moth again. This is another chart here where the best in the world have the tilt, the most tilt around 40 something, 30, I'd say 38 to 40 around there. Going to the worst, it goes up to flat. So the flat person is like this, you know, you think about it, how are they going to hit a golf ball? You know, the best person down there is having more of a tilt down. Really easy to do by turning this club this way. We're going to use my alignment stick for this and go, I'm going to turn this down along the alignment stick and then on the way through, I'm going to catch it this way. Now I can't get down as much as I used to. So it's not relevant. It doesn't put me on the scale anyway like here, because I can't tilt as much. I mean, physically, this is about as much as I can do. And a good way for you folks to test it is to stand up straight, lock your knees, turn here, and bend down. And guess what, you're in a pretty good position right there, okay? Boom, boom, you're in a pretty good position right there. And it gives you an idea of what kind of tilt you can do. So, wrapping this up, consistency. 
figure out what your consistency issues are and guess what then you can get better quicker at them if you if you know what they are they're going to be very evident you're going to find out you do something over and over and over okay whatever the shot is and you may th there may be one that bothers you more is why you say it but there's really something happening and there tells us something you need to work on okay so if you are that higher handicap numero uno beyond you know learning to pivot correctly is contact okay and my suggestion would be for contact is do a lot of drills that are focused around you hitting that ball first okay so another one we can do for that is this that i like is basically now you can draw something on the ground here or you can use this so it's set the club here on the ground or the alignment stick and i come here and now i need to make sure i get down to the ground and i am making sure i do not hit this so if you're not doing it right you are here into this right so i'm going to be here boom so i'm going to feel more for me i got to feel more around is what i need to feel more like that because i have a tendency to go like i've told you down like that which is going to bring even more inside so i would suggest doing this just over and over until you don't miss it i wouldn't use this because this will be hard at first use some spray paint or something piece of tape to mark it or if you're on the grass you can do a lot of different options so anyways i want to thank you for watching um i hope this helps you dial in your consistency issues so you can get better quicker and um thanks for watching eric schulberg ejs golf ejsgolf.com and please leave a comment uh, let me tell me what you thought uh tell me about what your consistency issues are and if you're on youtube uh please subscribe thank you